Okay, good morning. Welcome, everyone. My name is Dimitri van Gaver. I'm Market Segment Manager, Graphic Arts at uh, Zycon headquarters in Belgium. And it's my pleasure to welcome you to our Zycon Cafe TV on digital wall covering production. Whether you're working from home or just like myself, or whether you're working already from an office situation, uh, we really from Zycon appreciate the time that you take uh, to log in to our Zycon Cafe TV. And uh, we want to make it an educative session for you. Uh, to make sure you learn something, have the opportunity for Q&A, and it's uh, essentially about knowledge sharing, okay? So, um, as you might have seen already in this Zoom interface, um, you will have the opportunity to uh, ask some questions. So, there's a Q&A uh, option where you can ask your questions to the panelists. We will not be able to answer all your questions, of course, uh, today. Uh, but um, you rest assured that we will compile all the, all the questions and we will um, send you the answers afterwards in a Q&A document or you, or you can also, of course, reach out to us and, um, and we can have a, well, a discussion amongst us. Okay, so don't forget to post your questions. I will try to monitor them and, uh, and moderate uh, the Q&A session. So uh, let's take a look at the agenda today. Uh, so uh, we are now, of course, in the, in the welcoming uh, round. Just after this, I will kick us off with um, a presentation on digital choice for profitable and on-trend wall coverings, uh, which means that I will essentially discuss our, our solutions that we have brought to the market for digital wall covering production. And then after that, we're very excited to welcome um, Daniel Augustine from our customer in Sweden, Rebel Walls, who will uh, tell a little bit about the background of his organization and how they were able to make a profitable business model and really built our company on digital wall coverings. That's about for 15 minutes and then, and then we will go to the live uh, demonstration uh, part of this session. So we will go to our um, global innovation center in our headquarters uh, in Antwerp, um, where you can see the live demonstration of the wall production, wall deco production live. And then we will close off with some final comments. Um, you have the opportunity for some Q&A. And then uh, I think we will have a good, good session, okay? So as I said, um, let's kick off with um, my part of the, of the show today. That is the digital choice for profitable and on-demand uh, wall coverings. Uh, that's the, the name of the presentation, let's say. Okay. So um, of course, I will introduce our, our wall decoration suite that we have specifically built for the digital wall covering production market. And we believe it is a firm answer to all the challenges that you might encounter. Before going into the details of the solution, let's take a look at, at the business opportunity and at the size of the market and the market overview. So depending on the source, huh, um, and, and you will notice you're all professionals in the business, it's not always straightforward to find good material and good figures on the wall decoration production market. That's why in, uh, in 2018, together with some other industry players, we teamed up and we ordered a study at Smith & Spira, which is an analyst organization, and they did a thorough analysis of the wall decoration market. Because as you can imagine, some of these productions are in large format companies, others are in dedicated wall covering production uh, companies. So it's a little bit diverse. So we can believe that this is really a good source to start from. And if you look at the total uh, volume of both conventional and digital wall covering production, you can see that the estimated value is about $4.5 billion, representing about 2.2 billion square meters of wall coverings that are produced annually, annually on the global wall covering market. The digital value is less than 10%. Huh? You would say less than 10%, that's, that's not really a lot, but if you see what that represents in terms of volume, it's only 103 million square meters. So with a relatively small volume, the value is relatively high. And that's exactly what digital production is all about. Right? Looking at the future, they predict that um, there is a, a compound annual growth rate of about 13.3% uh, running up to 2023, both for inchat and EP, because notice that these are the two dominating technologies in the digital wall covering. And that is for digital, so that's good news. As we know, unfortunately, conventional volumes are stagnating and declining worldwide. That's a given. When we look at digital production, 
It's estimated that about 10% of this total volume in digital production is, produ is produced on EP presses, electrophotography presses, where Zeit is the only vendor. So let's say about 10% of total volume world digital wall covering production comes from Zeitung presses. And then if we look at how this digital share will evolve uh, in the next coming years, uh, so um, it is um, assumed to evolve at 7.2%, uh, uh, so about 200 million square meters. So these are a little bit of the figures to position a little bit of the business opportunity. I think in, in summary, we can say that it's, it's generally, traditionally, it's declining in market, but the digital share is definitely growing. So there's definitely room for profitable business. And there are a number of drivers uh, for digital production. And I think we all know this, especially in this period of, of uh, homing and cocooning. Uh, this is, has never been more uh, up to date as it is today. Um, there is individualization, uh, everyone's personal design, seasonal decoration, and you want to do it yourself. You can maybe change decoration inside your, your office space, for example, in every season. But there's also wall decorations in restaurants, hotels, um, and also in business environments. Uh, um, I'm sure in our business case uh, with our customer, we will discuss more about that. And then finally, there is a trend for sustainable living. So, and this is also good for digital. Move away from the traditional um, heavy vinyls, PVCs, which are quite cumbersome for the environment. Uh, no such thing in, in digital production. So all this together means obviously a high demand. For production. Then if we talk to customers and prospects, of course, they all have a mission. Right? And they, they have a mission. Um, when they want to execute this mission, they, can, they encounter a number of challenges. And we think with our solutions, we have been able to offer quite a good response to a number of these challenges. So if we look at the customer mission, of course, everybody wants to produce shorter runs in a cost-effective way. They want to offer customization, make sure they're on trend, have the latest collections, and they want to guarantee a very short delivery time. Now, if you want to do that, if this is your mission, well, you will have to deal with setup times, make ready costs and time that are related with that. You have a, an inventory risk, maybe, uh, and also the risk and cost of obsolescence. You need to be able to finish your product in a most efficient way and to and make sure you have your overall turnaround times under control. And it's exactly to those challenges that we believe with our solutions, we can offer answers because we provide the highest printing quality. We have the best productivity on the market, completely automated line that we offer, and we actually offer true sustainability. And we'll come back to that later. So um, if there are conventional uh, wall covering producers uh, that have logged in, I I think there, there are obvious advantages for digital, of course. The pre-press is simpler, um, have a greater flexibility design, have less waste and, and startup time. Um, you can print on a wide variety of substrates and you can address real environmental concerns. Now, if we talk to people that have already made the investment in digital production, we see that they run into a number of obstacles. Uh, first of all, um, the dominant technology, I, I just told you about 10%, is on EP presses. The wide majority is on, is on latex technology, a very good versatile technology, but obviously with its limitations. And that's where people run into. And they run into running costs that are relatively high, substrate costs that are quite relatively high. They even want to reduce inventory and waste. They want to increase or sort of reduce their time to market, increase the automation, and they want to comply with all the regulations. This is what we encounter very frequently. So basically, in summary, they want to scale up their wall deco business and still have profitable business and healthy margins. And that's where, where our solution comes in. Because the business opportunities are, are really big. Huh? You can go for short run production, you can go for end of life, startup or trial collections, you can print sample books, and you can go to the higher with one. So when we look at this technology, and, and we will, of course, go back in, uh, to the innovation center, and you can see all the different components, uh, you will see that we have built a complete line going from a jumbo unwinder to press to a varnishing station and to a rewinding solution. And this is all completely automated printing manufacturing or an end-to-end -end solution. And we can do that with an entry-level machine, or we can do that 
with a very high-end machine. And this means that we offer for basically every budget or every volume or every application focus, we want to come with um, a high-end solution or let's say at least um, compared to some of our competitors. Um, we start with a 3050, a Zycon 3050, and we move up to a 3500. And if we want to go for very high productivity, which is about yeah, roughly 900 square meters, our finished product, and you are facing uh, a CX500, which is our flagship. In the second column of this, uh, of this table, you can see uh, the core technology of, the, of the, those companies in many cases. And when we talk about entry-level solutions for Zycon, um, we see that people have invested in HP machine. They sometimes do a little bit of, of on UV inkjet and maybe some eco solvent. And then you go a little bit higher, you see people having 3.2 meter latex machines or multiple installations. And then the wall deco factory are really the guys that are into the reveal printing um, for higher volumes and the conventional production. So again, this is, um, this is a, a, a kind of theoretical, but this is to show you that we offer for every target audience, we offer a solution. And I think in the, in the invitation, we, we did a little bit of a teaser. Um, sorry, we did a little bit of a teaser where, where we said that we, can, we are really the fastest uh, on the market. And I think that's correct. Huh? Um, when, um, when you look at, um, at, at some, for example, a high-end solution huh, from a, a latex, and, uh, for some reason my screen is, uh, is jumping, so I have to apologize for that. Um, when you look at a high-end solution uh, for, for a latex uh, investment, for example, which is an HP Latex 3600, huh, which will run probably about for interior quality, high-end quality, it's about 60 or uh, 77 square meters an hour, huh, um, you will be running at those productivities. If you look at Zycon, huh, you will be running at 200, 300, 500, and even 900 square meters. So the slide, the previous slide keeps jumping away. So I will focus on this slide then because this nicely summarizes it. Um, if we would compare a production uh, volume of about 1500 square meters per hour and we would run them simultaneously on a 3600 latex machine, uh, you will be busy for about 20 hours and, and you will be printing only very high quality at, at 77 square meters an hour. If you would do the same thing on our smallest, let's say, our entry-level solution, which is the Zycon 3050, you would be doing that at, in 5.5 hours, but that includes your finishing. So you will have a finished product at the end. So that's in terms of productivity. And if you look at the total cost, if you look at this benchmark of 1,500 square meters production, and you would take a look at the variable costing and fixed costing of a Zycon 3050 versus a latex 3600, you would see that it's about half to do the same production in terms of production cost. And you can see the division in toner um, usage, you can see the division of substrate, and you can see the fixed cost. The fixed cost is obviously determined um, yeah, by, by your capacity. So, and then in summary for this small wall deco production battle, if you want a 1500 square meters per hour, you could see that you are more than five times faster because we didn't take into account the finishing part, which is usually um, offline or there is also some inline possibilities with Photoba. Um, and then you have uh, the running cost, which is about 50% of the other device, let's say, and also looking at the total cost of ownership, um, it's about 50%. So looking at this in a very uh, very quick way, uh, the, uh, as a teaser, let's say, and of course, we are willing to discuss this in more detail with you. Um, you can see that the Zycon is really a very good um, decision if you want to go for more volume, more output, and automation. A word on sustainability, and then now, now we're getting close to Daniel's uh, presentation of Rebel Walls, but I want, to, I want to stress this because a lot of people and a lot of vendors talk about sustainability, right? I think. Zycon maybe doesn't talk about it enough, but we really do it. And, and we are possible to offer to our customers an eco-responsible way of producing and, and limiting the carbon footprint and also take into account the health and safety of the operators. Now, why is that? First of all, Zycon production is a dry process. Um, there is no water, there's no imaging oils, there's no ink. We produce with dry toner. It's VOC free. 
no harmful substances, no odor. Our toners are even food approved if you want. So if you can digest the, the non-woven, let's say you can even eat it. I wouldn't recommend it, but um, the, uh, the toners are FDA approved. Um, we have a moderate press consumption, a power consumption, excuse me. You could, uh, compared to the high productivity, if you would calculate the power consumption per square meter, it's even less than an HP latex machine. Same things go for our um, technology. Our toner plant, for example, runs on 100% green energy and we are constantly investing in making it a more and a better place uh, for the environment. Same thing for um, the industry regulations, as I said, FDA approval, but all, uh, there's a whole uh, list of stringent um, um, regulations to which we comply. And then, of course, um, the odorless aspect is also important if you are into sensitive environments. Quick word on substrates. So um, we work with the leading uh, non-woven vendors uh, in, that there are in the world, let's say. So we constantly search for new materials together with them to qualify them. This can be uh, non-wovens with a self-adhesive backing, for example. This can be non-wovens uh, with a metallic coating, for example. So it's in constant evolution and we want to offer our customers access to the leading um, non-woven uh, producers that there are. And I think as a summary, I think we can say that our solution uh, um, by adopting Cyclone technology, you will be able to have a faster time to market. You will be able to produce much higher volumes and less production time, which will all translate in higher profit margins. And that is simply because it's the only unique integrated solution on the market. It offers you a superior print quality with the highest productivity, as, as you have seen, the lowest consumable cost and total cost of ownership in digital production, a superior sustainability performance, and also the lowest substrate cost in digital non-wovens. Also simply because it requires less converting in the mill, we work with jumbo rolls, so there is no converting to special sizes, packaging, etc. included. So um, endless possibilities, and these are some nice pictures. This is a, basically the bridge to the next topic, which is the, the presentation of our, of our, uh, our customer. Hmm. So um, Rebel Walls is one of our longstanding uh, customers and um, we will um, pass on the word later. I will first show a movie to Daniel Augustin who is responsible for business development at Rebel Walls in Sweden. But um, let's first look at, uh, at the movie of their digital production. So this was um, an introduction, an introduction movie of Rebel Walls of the company. Uh, I will now stop sharing my screen and I will give it over to Daniel Augustine. Th Daniel, thank you and uh, you're very welcome to our Zycon Cafe TV. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you very much, Dimitri. Uh, I think we had some issues with the sound during the presentation but yes we uh, did. yeah okay uh the movie uh was just a short introduction to show you and give you some inspiration of uh how the daily work is 
is going on here at Rebel Walls. Uh, so uh, welcome to Sweden uh, and the west coast of uh, of Sweden, where where Rebel Walls have its headquarters. And I'm Daniel Augustin. Thank you for the introduction, Dimitri. Uh, just a little bit short on myself. Uh, I have more than 20 years uh, of experience in the digital printing industry, and in particular. Uh, more than 12 years uh, with Cycon wallpaper production. So this presentation is a little bit uh, explaining how we are successful with Cycon high-end digital uh, printing. And first, a little bit short on Rebel Walls. Uh, we are uh, based in Sweden, as I said, in a small city called Borås on the West Coast. And uh, the company is founded uh, eight years ago by the family of Christopher and Irene Gimmerstad and uh, Rebel Walls is a brand within Gimmerstad group and in the brand of Rebel Walls we are about 20 team members and are um, selling globally through uh, 800 different reseller shops and and of course we are present with our global e-commerce uh, business model that I will explain to you during this presentation that is our most important uh, uh, sales channel at the moment. So currently uh, we ha have our uh, presence in 26 different markets in 23 languages. So Rebel Walls, uh, we, uh, we say we are beyond the ordinary and that's a little bit our mission as well. And I will uh, show you three slides on our why, how and what. And we believe uh, that everyone is different and we encourage you to claim your own space. That's a little bit our mission. And how we do that is by decorating walls for a global audience and to give them a customized experience. And we are not only uh, thinking about the wallpaper here, we are trying to create extraordinary room settings and give our customers and and consumers uh, uh, a possibility to, to be different and to also to, uh, to decorate the complete room by giving them inspiration and work with partners. And this is just to give you a little bit of inspiration. And our core, core values is always to think extraordinary and to be creative and make a change and claim your own space. That's that sort of goes through all our communication with our, our consumers. And just to give you a, a small view on how we work here at Rebel Walls is with, with uh, different personas and we have internal names on these, of course, but just to give you a view to the far left in, in my screen now, uh, we have during the last couple of months here and uh, during the Corona crisis, of course, a very important part and that's the con consumer uh, uh, where we, we only sell online. So that's actually our, our end users that is buying our products uh, online worldwide. Uh, that's, 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 I would say, more than 50% of our business uh, today. As important are our influencers, and we have global uh, partnership with influencers, both uh, in a more business to consumer uh, regime or, or in a business to business, more professional influencers, of course. And this is very important to us. And designers, uh, interior stylists, architects, business like hotel chains, restaurants, offices, etc., uh, resellers globally, uh, also, and in some areas and countries we also work with uh, distributors that manage their own um, uh, resellers and designers corporations and and etc in in those regions and the website is the same for all these different personas we only have one website and it's one digital warehouse uh, today we are serving 26 markets and every year we are opening minimum three new countries uh, until now and we will continue that um, on that track in the future as well minimum three new countries every year so
So why digital production? Uh, Rebel Walls is of course 100% digital, so there is no competition with conventional technology. However, we have more brands within the group, so we have a mix. And we believe digital production gives us uh, unlimited design capabilities. Uh, we have our own design studio and it enables us to, uh, to be more creative uh, by having unlimited number of colors and no repeat. So there are no restrictions with the conventional uh, repeat length that, that, uh, that uh, holds back the designers in their creativity. The high definition of detail uh, in digital technology is unmatched uh, if you go to uh, conventional printing. We take advantage of that as well. Uh, low or no stock levels. At Rebel Wars, everything is printed just in time, so there are no stocks at all. Uh, however, it can be for some designs that you want to keep a low stock level uh, to be uh, a little bit more uh, flexible in uh, in distribution, but at Rebel Wars we have no stocks at all. Everything printed just in time, and it enables us to have a broader assortment uh, since all our warehouse is digital. So we can uh, basically have unlimited amounts of collections and different designs. A very low startup, of course, with digital. That's a given, and that was also addressed in Dimitri's presentation. And not least, we have a much longer uh, collection validity, and that means phase in, phase out of new collections that is not, not necessarily high volume sellers. Uh, it gives us an advantage to have everything digitally stored and print just in time. So it's just a matter how we present that to our consumers. The production model, uh, just in short, uh, we believe in uh, having control of all parts. So uh, to the far left, design, we have our own design studio with four designers that is, is creating all our uh, collections ourselves. And we have our own software where we uh, develop uh, uh, the web front end, of course, and also the, the internal production flow all the way to the press and logistics. So everything is in our control and in a closed loop. Um, and the sales model uh, that we use from these systems are, of course, uh, online platform, the digital warehouse. And then we work in a more traditional way with distribution and resellers. And we also do contract production for white label and other brands that are not necessarily within our group, but we print with different brands as well. So after 12 years, we are still using Sycon. I think we uh, are now in the third generation of, of technology from Sycon and uh, it's a perfect fit for our business model. Uh, the production speed, as mentioned by Dimitri, is very important to us. Uh, the latest technology enables us to print up to 900 square meters per hour. And the full integration of an end-to-end -end solution is very important when you are scaling your uh, production. So Sycon can supply us with all the components needed to scale up our production from one supplier. That's very important for Rebel Walls. And the production cost per square meter is important when you are, are printing volumes. Uh, and the reliability and the support from, uh, from the organization is uh, at a very, very high level. Uh, next to that, of course, the, the environmental part that Dimitri explained very much in detail in his presentation. That's, that's a very important criteria being a Scandinavian, but also in the wallpaper uh, global industry and that there are no VOCs and that we are compliant with all the industry standards in the different regions in the world. And the high light fastness of the colors is also one of the unique selling points with, with this technology. Of course, technology is never perfect. We, we, uh, we are going for, for future improvements as well. And uh, one of the main things is to improve the edge to edge color stability. And that's what, what we are working very closely with Cycon and we are making great progress every year. And, that means that we are able to address 
much more uh, conventional uh, designs that that can actually be transferred from conventional directly seamless to to print digitally so the uh, so the uh, color stability from from one edge to the other edge is all then very very important and we want to have more substrates flexibility of course we can print on a lot of different substrates uh, today but we aim for even more flexibility in the future to meet the demands from the customers. And also special effects with digital partitional varnish, metallic colors, mica colors, and all these things are nice to have. Uh, and we hope to see that in the future. But our solution is very simple that uh, we believe digital gives us unique advantages and we are designing for the technology, not the other way around. Uh, so when the technology enables us to do new things, we try to uh, explore those possibilities and make it a very attractive consumer product. A little bit short about how we work with our online marketing. Of course, this is not new to you, but we are, uh, since we are uh, online, we work with all the uh, channels like LinkedIn, Pinterest, uh, Facebook, and Instagram, of course. And uh, the emailing campaigns is more focused on being uh, creating content and inspiration and try to give tools and, uh, and uh, ideas to our consumers. Uh, we have uh, quite a lot of people working with this uh, every day. And our own design service, uh, are creating new designs for, for the consumers, but also in our corporations with, with uh, architects, etc. we are doing very custom work here at our design studio. We try to market that. And since we are online, we also need to work with samples because wallpaper uh, consumers are used to go to the to the uh, to the store and they touch, they feel, they smell the samples. Uh, we need to have some kind of response to that, and we are we are uh, promoting our sam samples. We are actually printing and distributing uh, samples to all our consumers worldwide uh, on demand. Uh, that means that we are printing A4s or A3s and pack them in an envelope, and we send them worldwide. We work with collection books the conventional way. We are releasing a minimum two collection books every year. And also trend collections uh, that we publish online and we do individual product releases all through the year. Uh, we work with influencing uh, marketing, as I said in the, uh, in the beginning of the presentation as well, uh, of course, and uh, that gives us a lot of boost in our marketing uh, value chain and last but not least the more conventional uh, relationship we have with interior magazines and interior stores we try to to make special designs for special uh, uh, interior uh, interior uh, stores to have that kind of cooperation and, and be a part of their product portfolio in the in the indoors and that is my last slide if I remember right yes thank you very much uh, that was my presentation uh, and I think that we are open for some Q&A or will you do that in the end of the presentation Dimitri Back well, to you. first of all, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Daniel, for uh, for taking the time of explaining. It's very interesting, uh, interesting story on, on your great company. I'm just looking at uh, at the Q and A coming in, and I don't think um, at the moment there is no question yet. So um, we can postpone until the end of the of the session, and then uh, of course we can uh, we can come back to you. So thank you um, very much uh, once again. Um, if all goes well. Um, we should be able to transfer to the Global Innovation Center um, in LEAD headquarters. And I can see Gert already. Gert Janssen. Hello. Welcome. He is operating the machine. So Gert, thank you very much for being here. And uh, please go ahead. We're all excited. Welcome, everybody. My name is uh, Gert Janssen. And uh, welcome to our Zycle Global Innovation Center in Belgium. And I will give you uh, a live demo of our wallpaper application suite. So uh, as you could see already behind me, 
This suite consists out of a print engine combined with some uh, pre and post equipment. And at this moment, you can see we are already printing some wallpaper and finishing this. So we'll start in the beginning. The first unit is the print medium supplier. So we can put on some jumbo rolls on this unit and feed it through the print engine. So the maximum diameter of those rolls is one and a half meter, 850 kilograms, which is approximately 59 inch and 1875 LBS. So by use of those big rolls, we are able to do long production runs. Uh, this unit is also fully integrated with our uh, software and the press. So for instance, if we are running out of material, this will be tracked in the software. It's also very usual, usable, um, friendly for an operator. So if he has to do, for instance, a paper change, he will launch a procedure in the software, which is a step-by-step -step approach and which will guide him to do all the tasks. Over here, we have a splice table. So the operator can lock the substrate, make a straight cut, remove the existing reel and put on a new one. And afterwards, he can make a new splice by use of self-adhesive tape over here. The next unit is a, a, a web cleaner and we will use this to prevent from dust particles are coming in the engine. This unit is already a part of the print engine and it's an automatic controlled conditioning unit for the substrate itself. So to improve our printing process, sometimes uh, we need to dry out the substrate when it's too wet. And this will be done over here. So to make sure the substrate will always go straight in the middle of the engine without any deviation, we use this active aligner. And this is very critical for the finishing and uh, slitting part uh, afterwards. This is the actual print engine. It's a single pass system based on a photo electrography. So, the substrate will come in from the bottom, go straight to the top in between two towers. The right side will help to guide the substrate going up and the left side contains all the printing stations. In the printing stations, we are using an uh, organic uh, photoconductive drum, uh, which uh, will make the in, uh, the, which will form the image and this in a fully rotary uh, system. So we are not limited in the printing length. And this is a very nice feature if you like to print, for instance, some wallpaper uh, repeatable designs. Also, we can print uh, always the, the fastest speed, um, regardless how many print stations we are using and uh, the quality settings enabled. So if you like to print in the highest resolution, 1200 dpi and even like to enable an extra fifth color setting this will not have any influence on the printing speed over here you see the dosing units so if we are running out of toner the software will give an alarm and the operator can put on a new uh, toner bottle and this can be done on the fly without interacting the printing process Over here, we have an uh, automatic controlled humidity system for the environment inside the engine. So again, to improve the, the printing quality, we need to be able to set the correct temperature and the uh, relative humidity of the air inside the printer. We can evaporate water or we can take out water or moisture inside the engine. Here you see two filters. Every printing station will be cleaned. The dust particles and small toner particles will be soaked away, go through this filter system into a waste container. 
Then inside the engine on the top, we have a contact fusing system. So you have to imagine the toner is already transferred to the substrate, but now we need to fix this. By use of uh, two heating rolls, which are in contact with the substrate, we can melt down the toner on the surface. Okay, now we are leaving the print engine and we are coming to the web varnishing unit. So for the wallpaper application, we use a water-based varnish for indoor use, which is also odorless. And this will improve the scratch resistance of the substrate. It will make also a wallpaper washable. And it, uh, may, most of all, it will give a nice matte look, which is preferred as an industry standard. How does it work? We will pump the varnish into a closed chamber system, and this is in contact with an analog roll. The analog roll will bring the varnish to a print roller, and the print roller will apply the varnish on top of the surface. Over here, the varnish will be dried. It's going into this unit, and by use of hot air, the varnish will dry. And now we're leaving the varnish unit and go to the slitting uh, assembly. So we will use two rotary shear knives uh, to do the slitting. Those knives are, ve those knives are uh, very durable, and specially chosen for this application. So they are removable by use of these mechanical buttons. It's quite easy for an operator to set the correct slitting, and afterwards it can leave this. This is very stable. The waste will be extracted by these tubes and go to a shredding device. So now we are entering the wallpaper rewinder, which is actually a cordless rewinder. And as you can see, we can make rolls like this, wallpaper rolls, no core in it. Maximum diameter will be uh, 15 centimeters, which is six inch. And uh, I will explain how we do the cutting. So at the end of every printed job, we will enable a page header. And on this page header, in our software, we can add, add a lot of information, customer related, even a thumbnail, uh, a logo. But what is important for the cutting is over here, we have a QR code and here is a cutter marker. So it's a combination of those two will, which will activate the cross cut. In this part of the engine, we have the barcode reader and over here we have the cut marker sensor. So the cut marker sensor will trigger a rotary uh, cylinder with a die cut plate on it, and this will do the cutting. After the, the cutting is done, the roll will fall down in the output tray. And directly after this, there will start a new takeoff procedure for the next roll. So over here, we have the finished product. Okay, now I will tell you a little bit about the software we are using. So over here, we have the MyPress software, which is actually the operational part of the engine. All the settings which are needed to print are uh, over here in the middle. For instance, the conditioning, the toner transfer, and the fusing temperatures. So I already told you when an operator will do a paper change, he will launch a procedure. And in this procedure, he will activate also a specific script file. 
So this script file is related to a unique uh, paper brand or a type of uh, wallpaper. And all those settings are already incorporated in this uh, script file. So it's quite easy for an operator to start right away without the need of tweaking anything. Another thing I like to show you in MyPress is the linearized densities. Inside our engines, we have a photo spectrometer installed. So we can do an automatic uh, control of linearization and densities. So we will print some test strips along the web and this, those will be measured. And uh, this will give us stable colors during the printing run. So this is a brief overview of the MyPress software. And I, now I go over to our X800 workflow. So the X800 workflow is actually meant to do the job processing. It's an open GDF based uh, platform. So it could be coupled with other workflows, uh, web to print or MIS systems. But I have to say, uh, if you use the workflow uh, on its own, it has also a very uh, unique and strong features. And I will show you. On the top, I go through the four main sections. The pre-flight section, the ripping section, the layout section, and the pre-print section. So in the ripping section, we actually enable the quality or resolution we like to print. We also able to use some ICC profiles for so the color management settings are done also over there. And in the next step, we go to the layout. Here we have uh, several default uh, templates installed, which you can use uh, for impositioning. One of those templates is uh, meant for uh, wallpaper murals. So uh, the poster function, I'll give you an overview. So on the top side is the ripping of a big image and we'll split it up in different lanes. And over here, I will show you at the end, we have the page header, which contains also the barcode and the cut marker. A delivery address, the logo and all the other information and the print view, we will put on over here with some metadata also in the software. The preprint session, we define also which header we have to use. And that's done over here. So this is a short overview of the software. And I suggest we go take a look more in detail to the printed artwork of the samples. This is one of the samples we've been printing. It's a mural, so the image is split up in different lanes, and as you can see, it's a perfect joint. Both sides are perfectly joined. Give a more detailed view on another sample over here. You can see the perfect joint of the aeroplane. The slitting is done correctly. So thank you very much for your attention and I hope this was uh, useful for you. So I think I will give the word back to Dimitri now. Thank Dimitri. you very much Kat, okay. uh, for your explanation. Uh, You're welcome. It's been, it's been very good. So uh, I think everybody got an overview of how easy it is uh, and how user friendly it is to, to automate your wall covering production and get the highest quality um, at the highest speed. So let me, um, let me start sharing my screen here again. So I think, um, First of all, um, let me take a look at the questions. Um, so here on the screen, you can see, again, you can go to the Q&A section, type in your question there, I uh, checked, and there is no question yet. So that, that either means that we, um, we have been very clear in our explanation or you're all very shy, but that's not a problem. Um, so you can see the email address there, info at zycon.com. You will be able to, uh, to um, yeah, send questions, even book your personalized demo. You can also approach 
your sales manager for your area, obviously, and he will set you up with a personalized demo. So that's all very well possible. So we can we have to do it in a virtual way at the moment, but that's that doesn't hold us back. You can see that. Um, oh, there is a question um, coming in from India. Can we print fabric backed a wallpaper? Um, so uh, a, a good question on the types of, of wall coverings. So let's say that in when you look at the digital wall covering production, um, the majority is focusing on non-wovens. Non-wovens is um, a mixture of, of synthetic and paper fibers and has a lot of advantages. Um, it, it's very well printable. Uh, dimensional stability is very good. So if it comes into contact with moisture, it doesn't start uh, shrinking or uh, um, uh, deforming, let's say. It also is, uh, covers up quite uh, some imperfections in the, in the wall. It's very strong, doesn't tear very, well, very easily. So there are a lot of advantages. Uh, it's also much user uh, environmentally friendly than, than PVC uh, wall coverings. And if you want to, uh, let's say, if you want to look at different wall coverings like self-adhesive wall coverings or textured uh, wall coverings, we always give the advice uh, to reach out to, to Zycon, obviously, and we can do a qualification of the material in our, in our test center. What does that mean? First of all, we will take a look at um, the toner adhesion. We will make sure that the toner sticks nicely to the substrate because that's a first condition, of course, and only look at the heat and also look at the heat resistance to see how it behaves, how the substrate behaves uh, when it's exposed to the heat of diffuser. And that gives you clearly a good indication, a first indication of the printability of the material. And then we will go to rolls and start uh, qualifying. Now, uh, fabric-based um, wall coverings, to be very honest, I don't think we have any customers at the moment um, that, um, that are doing this. So I would advise you to reach out uh, to your local representative. Give us a sample of your, of your substrate that you want to print on, and we can have it analyzed in our lab and give you feedback if, if it would work on a Zycon or not. Um, for which are you working on 3D effects similar to embossed uh, PVC? That is a question here. Um, uh, somebody wants to know if we are working on 3D effects or embossed PVC. Well, um, because of the, the, the printing technologies, let's say, so you have uh, Zycon, which is a contact printing technology. Uh, um, it is not, it is challenging, let's say, to print on heavily embossed materials. And so if it's a little bit textured, it's not a problem because we have a separate fuser drum for that. Uh, but if it's very heavily embossed, it will not work uh, because of, uh, you would have to go to inkjet technology, for example, that does not really have an issue with that. Um, but we are investigating to have a post print embossing. So with an uh, auto or cold embossing um, to have with an extra device in line um, to do an embossing. But at the moment, um, we do not offer any 3D effects, let's say. Um, let's take a look um, at the other questions. Um, I see a question coming in for Daniel. Uh, Daniel, I see a question on uh, if you want to go for a larger web. I think you can see the question too. Yeah, indeed. Uh, thank you for the question. I was actually, as you were speaking, I was typing in my answer, but I will do it ah, live. Okay. I can do it live. Um, no, it's, it's uh, about the larger web width is mainly for our sub subcontracting work and for our white label business where we are printing for other brands when we are converting uh, conventional production to digital uh, production. So then we are aiming for the more conventional 530 millimeter width. That's, uh, that's the driver for that. Uh, for our own brands, Rebel Walls and uh, the conventional Sandberry brand, uh, 500 millimeter is just about right. It's not, it's not the issue. Uh, it's more, more to make it less of an issue to convert conventional volumes to, uh, to digital for other brands. Yes. Okay, thank you, Daniel. I see another question coming in. Do you have a single width or several widths available? So the machine that you have seen here and that we always use, uh, the, the width that we use is 50 centimeters. It's actually 500, depending on the press, 520 millimeters substrate width, but we, we print up to 500. 
508, uh, that's, a, that's a detail. Um, we, that is the press that we obviously advise. Huh? Uh, if you want to go for smaller roles, huh? that's, that's very well possible, huh? but uh, the advisable width, of course, you want to go as wide as possible. So what most of our customers do, if, if I may say so, is uh, especially on the machine that you have just seen, they use 500 millimeter wide and they slit a little bit uh, less, or they use 512 millimeter wide rolls and they slit up to 50 centimeters or 500 millimeters. So, but if you want to put a smaller or a narrower roll on the press, that's of course, uh, that's of course possible. But in wall coverings, I haven't had that, um, that uh, question yet. Um, I got another question coming in. If it is mandatory to use a RECO RFID unit, and I think this is somebody who knows uh, more about the technology. Um, uh, let me explain that. So, um, because we use electrophotography as a printing technology, which basically is based on, on static charges, the conductivity of your substrate is very important. And conductivity in, in many cases can be, uh, let's say, uh, or there's pointing at, at the humidity of a substrate. Wall coverings, non-wovens usually um, can be very dry when they come off of the, of the mill uh, from the factory. And in some cases, depending on your substrate, it might be, uh, advisable to rehumidify um, the the paper before we print it to give it the exact moisture content, eh? but it's only, to my knowledge, um, for um, a limited number of substrates uh, available. Uh, a lot of our customers are not doing um, rehumidification before printing. Uh, so maybe uh, Daniel, it, since you are a customer, are you doing that before you print? No. We are not doing that and we have made trials um, and we do not see at the uh, at the medias we are using uh, i would say uh, there is no added value of re-moisturizing uh, the substrate however uh, i would encourage everyone to have a close contact with the paper mill and the supplier of media because they are very flexible and open to uh, to actually fine-tune the moisture content for your needs and that's that's what we are doing here at rebel walls and they are very responsive to those changes yes okay thank you daniel um all right so i see no further open questions and i think we are just in time so i will um i will thank you very much for your time the people who attended it has been a pleasure welcoming you at our zycon cafe tv wall coverings um don't hesitate as i said before to answer or sorry, to reach out to your local sales representative or to send us an email on info at zycon.com and we will be happy to enter into contact with you for any discussion on, on any wall covering topic. And then um, yeah, the only thing I can say is um, I wish you a good health from the Zycon team, happiness, success, and, and stay safe. And uh, thank you once again for joining. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Daniel, for being here and uh, good luck. Bye-bye.